Contrary to popular belief, starting a business has never been harder. Although startup culture is gaining visibility and sometimes feels like mass pop culture, the number of new businesses formed each year is decreasing. In fact, it has declined by about 50% over just the past 30 years. As the number of small businesses dwindles, the number of people working at big firms increases. And no matter what measure of entrepreneurship you use, the underlying trend is the same, down. Why is this the case? Well, the barriers to starting a business are high and the barriers to survival are often even higher. Local and federal regulations are complex and require many trips to City Hall just to get started and require entrepreneurs to deal with licenses, taxes, and more. Despite the massive growth in the seed and venture ecosystem, many SMBs are also unable to secure the funding that they need to operate. And of course, and perhaps most importantly, the big are getting bigger. The overall revenues of Fortune 500 companies has risen from 58% of GDP in 94 to 73% in 2013. There used to be small business opportunities almost anywhere you'd look, but today, big box retailers and large tech incumbents often suck the air out of the room and capture most consumer spend. The pandemic has only accelerated this since it's obliterated many small businesses, leaving the giants to eat more market share. But there is hope. The younger generations have entrepreneurial ambitions. Many want to be their own boss. And while some mock this as youthful exuberance, many are starting their own side hustles that we believe will prove to be sustainable income sources over time. There's a saying that with great change comes great opportunity. And here we are amidst a social, economic, and health crisis, and we're witnessing record unemployment. This means that many no longer have anything to lose. They're no longer benefiting from things like employer-sponsored healthcare and are being forced to rethink their skills and reimagine their industries to thrive in a digital-first world. In fact, in August, there was the biggest jump in new business applications in more than a decade, an encouraging sign of pent-up demand and new opportunity. We're seeing this across many vectors. For example, as marketing shifts to online channels and individual influencers can build their own audiences online, traditional retailers are seeing a decline in the value of foot traffic. One very salient example of this is Gloss Genius, a startup that powers the individual beauty professionals and salon booth renters to grow and manage their own businesses and build a brand that lives independent of physical salons. Technology has also unlocked new entrepreneurship categories. From digital content to cloud kitchens to e-commerce stores, there are many emerging areas ripe with opportunity. We're excited about the technology platforms that democratize the CEO by reducing the friction to starting and scaling a small business. So how do we evaluate these platforms? After investing in many enabling entrepreneurship businesses at Bessemer, including the likes of Shopify, Wix, Teachable, Streamlutes, Canva, and Tribe, and evaluating countless others, we've created six laws for assessing them. Law number one, pricing. This law has two parts. The first says that pricing should be tied to the success of the customer and support ongoing revenue. This means that your most successful customers pay you more over time. Most enabling entrepreneurship businesses cater to the long tail of individuals and micro enterprises that are just getting started. This is a really high churn segment where we often see over 30% gross customer churn. This is basically inevitable, a fact of life, and that's okay. But you have to offset this churn by generating more revenue from the successful customers, yielding net revenue retention that's above 80% and ideally even 100% or more, as per our good, better, best frameworks. The second element of pricing is transaction fees. Transaction fees can be a great way to tie revenue with customer success, but they're not one size fits all. Platforms that spend time and money to generate incremental demand for their customers earn the right to capture a transaction fee of over 5%. Outschool, as an example, is a marketplace for live online classes for kids, and they command a 30% take rate since their teachers depend on them to acquire learners. On the flip side, Shopify pushes the full burden of customer acquisition onto its merchants, but as a result, they only capture a few percentages of growth sales. So please make sure that your fee scheme is aligned with the value. Law number two. Make it easy for individuals to get started. Abstract away the complexity and provide simple tools. But as we just covered, it's critical to retain the most successful customers even when they require enterprise level support. This is perhaps the hardest of the laws to master. There are a few that are able to both provide a simple and easy to get started offering 
while simultaneously serving the enterprise with enterprise-ready features. Our portfolio company, Wix, has done this masterfully. Law three, ideally 10 to 15% of your customer base should generate the majority of their income via the platform. The categories that we've seen be most successful are those that can start as side hustles, but evolve into lucrative careers. Substack is one great example. They make it easy to start an email newsletter subscription. Their customers are amateur bloggers with passionate Twitter followings. But in just two years, their top writers are now raking in millions. Law four, narrow the funnel. We often see companies focus too much on top of funnel and too little on conversion. This is a mistake because many enabling entrepreneurship businesses easily generate top of funnel interest, but suffer from severe leakage since the barriers to creating something of value are still too high. We encourage our portfolio companies to focus on improving conversion, ideally by 10% or more each year, and to do so by automating steps required to go live and by lowering the barriers to creation. In 2017, I led our investment in Teachable, a platform for creating and selling online courses. Many of Teachable's users, both those that are free and even those on the paid plans, had grand ambitions, but would get stuck in analysis paralysis and never actually launch or finish creating their courses. The company invested in tools that made it much easier to create high quality content, which dramatically improved conversion rates and led to faster growth and much better economics. Law five, arm the rebels. The best way to fight the large incumbents is to arm the underdogs with tools that help them to differentiate, accentuate their uniqueness, and cultivate direct recurring relationships with consumers. Take Shopify, which has positioned itself as the anti-Amazon. Toby, its founder, focuses all of his time on the long tail merchant experience, not the consumer experience. Whereas Bezos is all about owning the entire end user experience. Law six, founder market fit. These often aren't your stereotypical Silicon Valley founders. And we absolutely love that, the empathy and authenticity that it engenders. Patreon was founded by Jack Conte, who was a musician in the band Popple Moose and started Patreon as a way to better monetize his fan base. It was founded to solve his problem. Using these six criteria, we are looking to back companies across these three segments. Vertical platforms specific to a type of work, like a Shopify for commerce or a Teachable for online courses, engagement and monetization tools that help to grow your audience and build direct relationships with end customers. This includes companies like Tribe, a new addition to BVP's portfolio, which provides community management tools, or StreamYard, which makes it easy for anyone to create a professional live stream. And lastly, companies that automate the back office complexities of starting and scaling a business. These are areas that we are especially excited about investing more into over the next year.